Hey, it's Chris Greenwood here, also known as Manifest, author of the book From Red to Black, A Short Journey from Debt to Liberty. And today I want to talk to you about the habits of the rich. And one thing I've learned is that, look, if you want to be wealthy, study wealthy people and do what they do. Model what they do. Success leaves clues. And find out what poor people are do and don't do what they do. And if you find out you're doing some of the habits of the poor people, stop doing it and start implementing the, uh, the habits of the rich. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm going to be covering a few habits of the rich here. And the first one I want to cover is that the rich invest in assets. All right. It's been said like this though. Rich people educate themselves, poor people entertain themselves. And rich people tend to educate themselves so that they can buy assets. Like in the last video, I talked about how, you know, um, your house is not an asset unless you rent it out and then it becomes a cash flowing real estate property and you're renting it out to people and you're bringing money in every single month. The rich also invest in businesses. They create products and services and things that are bringing in money every single month. Where unfortunately the poor, they invest in liabilities. Always going on those vacations, jewelry, clothes, uh, alcohol, and partying and stuff like that that doesn't bring money into their pocket, all right? And so if you want to be wealthy, you want to start thinking, what assets can I start creating? Maybe it's not real estate yet. Maybe it's a business. Maybe it's a product, a service, something that you create. The first asset I ever, ever created was a song. And then the second asset we ever created was, was, our, was our house. It was actually our condo. When me and my wife got married, we, uh, we moved into a one bedroom condo plus a den. And, but we ended up you know, learning about real estate and money and stuff. And we wanted to eventually have a family, so we wanted a bigger home. But what we learned is one of the secrets was instead of selling it and upgrading our home, which means we're gonna probably have a bigger mortgage and then have you know higher property taxes and more to manage, we kind of just went up a little bit bigger, like a tiny bit bigger, but instead of renting out or selling the condo, we rented it out. And that was our first asset as far as real estate. And that was a strategy we learned somewhere in a book where, you know, instead of just selling your condo and always upgrading and upgrading and upgrading, you know, why not, you know, move into it, you know, instead of selling it, rent it out and then just move up a little bit instead of always stretching to have this bigger home or whatnot. And then I got all these different assets that are bringing money into my pocket. Okay. So that's one of the first things you need to know about the riches. They invest in assets. And of course I'm reading from my book here from red to black. The second secret of the rich and one of the habits is that they use their time to learn. All right, there's a quote from Jim, Jim Rohn in here and it says, formal education will make you a living. Self-education will make you a fortune. And so this is the idea, like, look, if you just want to make a living, you know, then just go to school, go to high school, college, university, but then don't learn, don't grow after that. But what I've learned and, and what's made me so successful and debt free and able to build wealth is that I kept learning. You know, I've spent more money on my brain and my education outside of college and high school, 10 times more that because I'm constantly learning. All right. And one of the strategies that I've learned is, is never allow waiting time to be wasted time. As I've toured 22 different countries, we're always on the road, in the car, in the plane, on the train, you know, going different places. And I realize there's a lot of downtime and even driving to my work when I used to have my nine to five. And so I wanted to use that time to learn. And so at my traveling became my mobile university. I always had online courses I was listening to, podcasts, audiobooks. I would have books with me, always reading and learning and growing. I'll never forget before a flight, I was flying out of Toronto one morning and there's this book at the store I wanted to get and it was about real estate, of course. And it was like, man, like I didn't really have a lot of money back then. And it was like, do I eat or do I get the book? And I thought, you know what? I'm just going to get the book and I'm going to wait till I get to my destination and I'll eat there because they'll probably provide food for me because I was going to a show. And so kind of starved myself and, uh, you know, got the information. But let me tell you this, the information in that book changed my life. And now I don't have to worry about whether I can buy food or the book or whatever it is. I can get both. All right. I don't have to sacrifice like that like I used to, but it's because... I was willing to do what most people won't do so I can do what people can't do now. And so I want to encourage you, be willing to do what others won't so you can have what others can't have later on in life. All right. The third thing that I want to cover here um, as far as uh, the habits of the rich, and this is one of my favorites here. This is, and this is a simple one, but it's so important. And it's that the rich spend less than they make. 
That's right, they spend less than they make. Imagine that, right? You know, whatever comes in, if you, if you make $3,000 a month or $4,000 a month, then spend less than that every month so that you can save, so that you can invest, so that you can pay down your debt and have a little bit le left over so you can do the things you want to do. Build the assets. But what do most of us do, man? We, we overspend because we want to have that thing now. We don't want to wait for it. We don't want to save for it. You know, we, we think life is microwave dreams and that life is some clickable link that we just want it now, now, now. And we don't know how, we don't know how to go through the pain of going without for a temporary time so that we can have the things. And so one of the things I want to challenge you with that is like, look, make a budget. Do a cash flow budget. And if you've never done that before, we talk about that in, in the book From Red to Black. And it's the idea like, look, how much do you make? Write it down. Then go through all your visa statements, your bank statements, and see what do things cost. What is the bank charging you every month? What is water costing you? What is groceries costing you? Your car loan, gas, groceries. List it all out and then subtract that from how much you make every month and then you've got your total. And now you know how much extra you have to work with. And look, if you don't have a plan for your money, it'll find a plan. All right, and it'll just go to all these different places, and then you'll be like that guy who says, man, I just don't know where it all goes at the end of the month. And that's because you don't have a plan for your money. So I wanna challenge you to do two things. Make a budget, find out how much you make, and then make a plan for where that money is going to go. How much is gonna to go to smash off debt? How much is it gonna to go to invest in your dream or invest in an asset so that you have other income streams? And we'll talk about that in the next video about building multiple income streams because it's so important. So I'll see you in the next video. Make sure you get a copy of From Red to Black and I wanna remind you that a fighter isn't someone who never fails, a fighter is someone who never quits.